and thank you for joining us for Mark's Madness. Alongside Mark Shine, I'm Matt Finkel. Mark, we've got three unbeaten teams in the viewing area. Lima Senior, LCC, and Lincoln View, all beginning with L. Yeah. And let's begin with LCC and Lima Senior. They both had one game this week, and they both won pretty easily. LCC over Grove, 72-38. Lima Senior over Whitmer, 77-59. Well, if you look at what the Thunderbirds did, it's easy to see that Cobbs and Walton each had 22 points. But what's really impressive, I think, is they had nine different guys score. They had five different players make a three-point field goal, and their defense has just been outstanding lately. They're giving up just 36 and a half points a game over the last four games, so the Thunderbirds really got it going on both ends. They're 11 and 0 overall in the polls. Our first polls came out this week. They are ranked number one in Division Three. Well, and why not? You know, they've been to the state tournament two years in a row. They won one of those. They've got four key players back or so from that particular groups of teams. So why not put them at number one when you're undefeated 11 and 0? Number two in Division Three, the Los Angeles St. Joe's again, yeah. the team that they've played the last two years at the state tournament. So if it holds, maybe it's a, a it's a rubber match at state. Well, I'm not a big fan of polls because you get a chance to play. Everybody gets in the tournament. It's not like one of those things we do where you put some people in and some people don't. Everybody gets in the tournament, but it's nice recognition for your team statewide to have that type of honor. Okay, how about Lima Senior over Whitmer 77-59? They're now 5-0 and in the track. I think a couple things that really stood out with, for me with them. Xavier Simpson, his low game of the season, 18 points. Wow. Low game of the season. That was back against uh, the team from Missouri. He's played extremely well, obviously, but over the last three games, Jar Ward has averaged 15 points per game. He has really come along for Quincy Simpson. Solid defensively, long arms, very aggressive player defensively, and now he's scoring as well. So they're getting a lot of different places, points from different places too. Couple tough upcoming games for both of these teams, the T-Birds and the Spartans. Spartans have OG on Saturday. That's a game we'll have for you on WOSN. Then third good Marshall at flying to the hoop on Monday. And then LCC has Crestview and Versailles this weekend. Crestview and Versailles, and they have Dayton Chaminade Julienne after that, who is the only team to beat Versailles this season by three. So they have three really good challenges. Crestview is nine and two, Versailles is 10 and one. Uh, I think Dayton Chaminade Julianne is nine and two, all heading into the week play we have going on right now. So some real challenges coming for Thunderbirds and congrats. Congratulations. If you're not going to play in a league, go out and schedule good non-league competition to make sure your team continues to get better. And we're two weeks away from that Lima Senior LCC battle for yep. the Lima Cup. Looking forward to that. Both teams with a little work to do to get to that game unbeaten, but I still think it's a strong possibility. Strong possibility. Big challenges for both teams, especially I think for the Thunderbirds, but challenges come up and that's why you play the games. You want to get out and compete and prepare yourself for that particular event. In the track, mentioned that Lima Senior is 5-0. Finley lost to St. John's by 15, then beat OG in overtime on Saturday. So the Trojans are now 3-2 in the track. St. John's plays Lima Senior again on the 22nd. That one will likely decide the league. Most likely. I mean, certainly there's challenges for both teams ahead. St. John's is playing very well. And of course, a win like that over Finley was a key win for them. But they'll have to come to Lima Senior later on the season. So that favors the Spartans when they get to that matchup. All right, our third unbeaten, Lincoln View. They're ranked first in Division yep. Four, and a challenge for them on Friday night against Bluffton. They were actually down by seven points with 2.45 left in the game. Trevor Neat scored the final 10 <laughs> to help them get the 53-50 victory. Well, a couple things about that. First of all, Neat does come along. He's got 17 for the game. So does Yautzee. They get 13 from Adams, so another good balanced scoring game for them. But they held Bluffton to just 50, and that gave them a chance to get their offense going. This has been a team that's been very solid defensively all year long. They gave up 60 to Wayne Trace, a couple of 50-point games like Van Wert and so on. But everybody else has been in the 40s or less. So it's been a solid defensive team uh, over there for Brett Hammonds. And then, of course, down balance scoring, including what they did the other night with Bluffton. Now, when we looked at them early in the season, we said they're the surprise team. Right. Now, it kind of feels like, oh, we, we know who they are and we expect them to keep winning. Well, we knew they were going to be good. But to be undefeated at this point in the season, I think was a little bit of a stretch, particularly considering how good the conference is been. I know we're going to talk about several more NWC games, but the conference is very good as well. They have a lot of challenges ahead of them. Yeah, let's go through the rest of the NWC then now. Spencerville beat Ada easily on Friday and then Bath in overtime. Bath has played some close games this year, haven't they? Yeah, yeah we'll get to the Bath Wildcats a little bit later on. We'll get to the Western Buckeye League, but you're right. Five very difficult losses for the Wildcats this year, but Spencerville continues to find ways to win. Dakota Pritchard had a big weekend for them, averaging 17 points per game. Golke's now averaging in double figures over the last couple games as well. Mason Nurse hasn't scored as well. He's become more of a distributor, but you know he can bury outside jump shots if you leave him alone. So they've got things going now in Spencerville. Eight and two overall, two and one in the league. A bunch of great finishes, including oh. Jefferson Crestview this week. And that game, 59-57, Jefferson gets the win at the stage. They're both now two and one in the league. 
They really are. And of course, Jefferson needed that win uh, because they were already a game down in conference play. They needed that win on the stage. Obviously, a very, very difficult team to play. And once again, it's Smith and Stockwell. They had uh, 25 and 13 between the two of them. That's the way they play. They, they score a lot. And then they get up a few points here and there. Riss had a nine-point game or nine-and-a-half-point weekend. Uh, averaging over the weekend, so they get scoring from him. Every once in a while, Gergen scores. Hicks gets in the rebound basket, so kind of what Coach Smith wants to, to do with his team. Jefferson then lost to Wayne Trace on Saturday. The Knights beat Arlington, so we've got three teams at 2-1, and one, and Lincoln View sitting there alone at 3-0. and oh. Well, you look at Crestview, and of course, lots of have scored for them just all season long. He had 43 points in their two games this weekend, but watch out because Javen Etzler has really started to find his form. Just he a had, freshman, if I'm not mistaken. He is mistaken. just a freshman. He had 31 combined this weekend in the two games. He made some three-point field goals. I watched him play as a middle schooler. He's 6'4 with a perfect form on his jump shot. Somebody has really worked with that young man. Of course, if your name is Etzler yeah. and you're in Crestview, you know you can play basketball. And you've got a great family behind what you want to do over there, but his form is outstanding on his shot. He's a 6'4 freshman. He's got good range, and now he's starting to make three balls as well. Watch out for what he's going to do over the last part of the season. All right, in the Western Buckeye League now, Mark, three teams are 3-0 in the league. Same three we talked about last week, Defiance, OG, and Wapak. And then we've got Shawnee and St. Mary's sitting at 2-1. and one. Now, OG and Finley played a great game, one of the many great finishes yep. we saw, in which OG fell to Finley in OT, snapping their six-game winning streak. Scored late to get it into overtime, but Finley just kind of overcame that. And, and with the win, Tyson McLaughlin's team is 10-2. and two. They've played well this season. They get balanced scoring from Veerhoff and Unterbrink and Wyrock and Stover and Kaufman. They get balanced scoring. They like to play a little bit up-tempo, get out and get after people, make things happen. They've got big games coming up this week because they've got at Shawnee, then they have Lima Senior, then they go to Defiance the week after that. So three really important games coming up now for the Titans. So Wapak and Defiance also unbeaten in the league, yep. but let's talk about Shawnee because they've won seven in a row. They're nine and three. They beat Delphi St. John's by 21 on Saturday, Van Wert by 12 on Friday. And as you just mentioned, the big one with OG coming up this weekend. Yeah, you're right, Matt. You looked at where their season was at. At one point, they were two and three, and you're thinking, okay, it's another one of the Shawnee seasons. They're going to end up right around 500, but they've really turned it on. O'Neill's averaging 23.3 points per game on the season. He's made 19 three point field goals, so it starts with him. But then they've been getting a lot of balanced scoring. Casey has scored, Wilkerson has scored, Rosario has scored. They did just get points from a lot of different people after that. So they're having a good season right now at Shawnee. Congratulations to the Indians. Bath lost to Defiance by four, yeah. and then we talked about their overtime loss to Spencerville. They've just been in some close games. They really have, and you got to kind of feel for Coach Sean Allen and his team. You know, they got a five-point loss to Grove, three points to OG, three points to Finley, four, four to Defiance, one to Spencerville. Two of those games are in overtime. They're in every game. They just seem to be like one play away from being uh, to having a team that might be eight and four instead of four and eight. It, it's a good basketball team. It's better than what we think. I think we're just looking at their record, and they will challenge the people in the Western Buckeye League. Yeah, they'll get better as the season goes along too, and could be a dangerous team come right. tournament time. Wapak beat Elida and Indian Lake. They're now eight and four. And then Defiance, they beat Bath, as I just mentioned. They lost to Wasion in double overtime. So they're 8-3 and three overall, and three of their last four games have gone to <laughs> overtime for the Bulldogs. Three of the last four games in overtime, led by Cam Singleton, of course. Um, a tough loss, I think, to Finley, but one that they will bounce back from. They've got league challenges coming up. They've got Archibald, then they've got Salina, then they've got Fairview after that. So I think there's three very winnable games for them to get them back on track before they match up with OG. All right, to the BVC now, and the wow. good finishes continued. <laughs> and we were looking at this game last week, Liberty Benton versus Van Buren, the two unbeatens in the league. Van Buren was unbeaten overall entering this game. And it goes to overtime, and let's show you how it got to overtime right. and then how it ends because this really was a great basketball game up at Van Buren High. Master Lasko ends up with 20, but the big play right here is Kraft. He's going to get an offensive rebound basket. You can see they trail by two right here. Um, Van Buren's in a zone, which allows Kraft a little bit of freedom, comes right down the lane, rebounds the basketball, power layup, and that's going to put the game into overtime. He's going to end up with 33 on the night, and now we go to the extra four minutes, and the same scenario is going to occur. We're going to get a perimeter jump shot take place, and once again, Kraft comes down the middle and just goes and gets the basketball. A little bigger, a little stronger. He scores to give them the early lead in overtime. They're going to get a free throw coming up right here. But here you can see again just the strength to go get the basketball and then power up through the defender and get a basket there as well. And then late in the basketball game, you can see Van Buren still ahead by two. We're going to get perimeter jump shot right here from May, and he can just flat out drill it. He's got a hand in his face and still drills the three ball. 
Uh, one of the best shooters around, somewhat streaky at times, but you can see out of the zone, a little bit of screen by Kraft at the top of the circle. There's the pass in the corner with the defender closing out the big three-point shot. That's going to put uh, the, the Liberty Bent Eagles ahead. They're going to win by three in overtime. Huge win for them, particularly when you look at the rest of the schedule because they get Arlington at home, they get Macomb at home, they get Hopewell Loudon at home, so the schedule really favors uh, Liberty Bent right now. Always feels like they just find a way to win in they the BVC. They've got size in Kraft. They've got a really nice point guard in Master Lasco. They've got the guy who can drill the three-point shot outside from with May, and as we talked about the other day, don't forget about Osborne. He's the guy who does all the little stuff and gets rebound baskets here or there, scores in transition occasionally, and so they've really got it going up there at Liberty Bend. Lipsick and McComb also just one loss in the league. The Panthers beat PG and Corey Rawson this weekend. Lipsick beat Arcadia, lost to Grove by one, as you saw on WSN, another close finish, 52-51 yeah. on Saturday. Yeah, what we're going to find is Liberty Benton's going to get challenged. Of course, they have a win already over Lipsick. They're going to get challenged, but they certainly have the schedule in their favor. All right, on to the NWCC now, and Perry still atop the league, 10-2, 3-0 overall. They beat Waynesfield, Goshen, and Parkway this week and a big addition for the Commodores in Glover. Well, you're right. Kobe Glover became eligible, set out his 11 games, as required when a transfer student comes in. He's 6'4". He made a huge difference against Parkway. You can just see now they have size and strength inside. But think about where they were. They were guard-oriented with Lane Harvey, tremendous outside player defensively and offensively, Plummy Gardner, Orion Monford. And now you add the 6'4 Glover inside. He's also athletic. He can run the floor. And the best thing for Coach Tabler, all four of them are juniors. Wow. And where is that program headed the rest of this year and into 15 or 16, 17? Bright future ahead. Absolutely. And I'm sure they have big plans for this year as well. Elsewhere in the NWCC, Ridgemont's 2 and 1 yep. still. 7 and 5, they play. They were supposed to play Allen East on Tuesday, but that game canceled due to the snow. Like most of the games Tuesday night, all postponed due to the snow. Temple's 2 and 1 in the league, 6 and 5 overall. They beat Harden Northern, lost to Allen East. You saw them this weekend, correct? Uh, you saw Temple Christian. Uh, they shoot the basketball well. Not particularly well in the game that we did with Harden Northern, but they were scrappy and defensive oriented. They forced a lot of turnovers from Harden Northern, and even though their offense didn't click as it typically can, they still had enough points on the board after playing defense to win the game. And then we've got Riverside also 2-1, and one. so still a lot to be decided in the Northwest Central Conference. But let's go to the MAC now, and <laughs> buzzer beaters were a plenty in everywhere. the MAC everywhere. Yeah. So let's start with Versailles because they're perfect in the league, still 4-0, 10-1 overall, and they had an NBA 3 from Alex Wendell to get right. their victory on Friday night. Yeah, Stallman's got 30-plus points in that game. He's just carrying St. Henry along. He had 36 in that one. He's carrying St. Henry along, and then the big three-point basket, if you had a chance to see that, it was way out there. He was NBA range plus to win the basketball game was Wendell. So Versailles, again, a team that just keeps finding ways to win basketball games. Coldwater had her buzzer-beating victory with Jack Hemmelgarn taking down New Bremen 52-51. For recovery, Marion Local and Coldwater all picked up league wins, so they're still unbeaten at 2-0. Marion Local beat New Knoxville on Friday. That was a good game at the barn. A lot of, a lot of energy. <laughs> yeah, there was. And, and, of course, Marion Local, you kind of forget about them a little bit. They got the late start with football, but they've got a good conference record going. But the game of the week in that conference coming up this week, Fort Recovery and Versailles play this week. Huge game in conference. Looking forward to that. Indians coming off wins over Parkway and Franklin Monroe. Back to Marion Local for a second. Tyler yeah. Mesher having a great season. He had a big game in that win against New Knoxville. Now, St. Henry's 8-4 and four with that loss on Friday night, 1-2 in the league. Mitchell Stallman though, 36 oh. and 31. He made at least six threes each right. night, correct? Each night. Yeah, he made six threes each night. Friday and Saturday. And, and you know, okay, he is the guy who is carrying them right now. We got to find a way to go out and defend him. He's still getting 30 plus in those two games this weekend. Just had a tremendous weekend shooting the basketball. Very talented young man coming back from a year ago and he's really helped him out. Quick look at the Shelby County League. We've got Rushi now 6-1 after a double overtime victory versus Fairlawn. And Jackson Center 6-1 in the league as well. They play each other twice, as we've talked about. Those two teams look like one of them is going to come out with the league title. And if there is a surprise, I think we thought Jackson Center would be good. But I think if there's a surprise in there, it's Rushi because they graduated those 10 players yeah. from a year ago in their state tournament run, plus new coach and all those things that contribute to a team where you're not exactly sure what they're going to have. Rushi's kind of the surprise team right now in the conference. That's a great point because they had such a senior rating group a year yep. ago. Anna beats Bakkins by two, so the Rockets are 8-5 and five overall. 
PCL, Grove beats Lipsick to improve to 2-0 in the league. Bulldogs have now alternated wins and losses the entire season, so they're 5-4. Collida beats Jennings, Fort Jennings and Tenora over the weekend. They're 2-0 in the league. We've got a good one coming up this weekend in the Putnam County League. That's correct. On Saturday night, Mark Miller and I get to see the Columbus Grove and Collida game. That's for the PCL early lead and perhaps for the championship. You're right, Collida's kind of bouncing back and forth, but their wins have come in PCL games, so they're undefeated in conference play, as is Collida. Uh, who had a struggle. They lost three out of four for a while, but it went over Spenceville in the mix of those losses. So they're playing pretty well right now. The, the negative, I think, if you're, if you're a Columbus Grove team, is they have to play Lincoln View on Friday. And you know how much emotion and energy and enthusiasm that will take. And then to come back and compete in the PCL on Saturday night against a Clyde team that doesn't play on Friday night, a little bit of advantage, I think, to Coach Quarterkratz' team. Yeah, we'll see if that plays into that game at all. And finally, in the GMC, Wayne Trace beats Fairview and then Jefferson. So they're 8-4. and four. Bit of a slower start than we expected, I think, from the Raiders, given that they were in the state tournament last year. But they're starting to hit their stride a bit. Yeah, they really are. And I think it's one of those things where you lose some senior guys who graduated. Plus, they had a couple guys hurt that they've now got back into the lineup. So that's part of why they're getting better. They will be a, a team to be deal with as we get into the tournament. So we talked about a lot of the games coming up this weekend. Give me two or three that you're really excited about. Well, it's very easy to look at sales and LCC. That's a, the, a huge basketball game. Of course, I get to see the, the Columbus Grove game, yeah. on, and I'm looking forward to that just because of what it means in and the Versailles PCL. And Fort Recovery, right? And Versailles Fort Recovery. So there, there's so much going on, it's hard to pick out a game. Um, Versailles Fort Recovery, I think, maybe could be for the MAC championship. Big game there, so lots going on this weekend, and of course, OG LCC as well. And we'll have you covered on our rebroadcast schedule. Let's take a look at that. Again, we did have some cancellations on Tuesday night, so no midweek games this week, but Friday, we get it started with LCC Crestview at 10.30 on WOSN. And then Friday, 10.44 WTLW, watch Minster take on New Bremen in the MAC. Saturday, 7 p.m., Arcadia and Macomb. Good one in the Blanchard Valley Conference. Saturday, 8.30, Versailles versus Fort Recovery. Really looking forward to that one. Saturday, 10.30 on WTLW, I'm a senior versus Ottawa Glandorf. And Saturday, 10.30, WOSN, Columbus Grove versus Collada with Mark on the call. Sunday, 5.30, little girls action. Ottawa Glendorf, Lima Senior. That one will be from Spartan Gymnasium. You can see that at 5.30. Sunday, 7 p.m., Jackson Center versus Marion Local. That should be a really intriguing mm -hmm. non-conference matchup. Sunday, 8.30 p.m., Spencerville and St. Mary's. So lots to look forward to. We've got you covered on the West Ohio Sports Network with the Sports Report Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 10, plus all those rebroadcast games. And you can check the website, WOSN.TV, for the full schedule, including those replay times. Thanks so much, Mark. Thanks for joining us on Mark's Madness, and enjoy your games this weekend.